please uh, uh, give a warm greeting for each other. God loves you. God bless you. God loves you. God. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The all has gone with his Today is a very glorious day. Yesterday, it continually raining, but today, when I get up, it's a dramatically, I could see the clean and glorious the blue sky. Thanks to God. Okay, uh, today, the, the title of uh, today's message, in this troubled world, the first thing we must do is uh, to preach gospel to all people. Quite a long uh, sentence. Uh, in the last chapter, Jesus told highly educated Pharisees and Sadducees about the Messiah. Jesus had compassion on them. Even though they were well educated, they could not see the Messiah Jesus. They were bright spiritually. They should have been humble, but they were too arrogant to see the Messiah Jesus. They lost the precious opportunity to see the great deliverance of God for mankind. It is a great tragedy. It is great uh, treasure. Next, Jesus mentioned about a poor a widow's hope. Amount of work is very little. But quality of her offering and her offering attitude excel the arrogant act of putting bundles of money in the offering box. God wants our heart, not sacrifice. Today, Jesus talked about sign of end of age. When we think about the sign of end of age, this seems indeed horrible. But we have a great mission to carry out to appeal for the glory of God. The beginning of verse 10. Look at verse 1. As we, as he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stone, what magnificent, magnificent building. This one verse so again, reveal Jesus' disciples' mind. The disciples firmly believe Jesus would establish an earthly messianic kingdom and they would do all be a very important person of the, the Israelites. Look at verse 2. Jesus answered them, Do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone uh, will be thrown down. Jesus was teaching about uh, the vicious circle of human history. According to Toynbee, world history is composed of challenge and response and another result come out. In a word, his view of history is based on Hegel's dialectics. Jesus' view of his story is more simple, different. Jesus said, Do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. The immediate prediction was the destruction of the temple. It actually came to pass in AD 70, the Jerusalem fell to the seizing army of Titus, the Roman general. The, this, he desecrated the temple, demolished it completely, until one stone was left on another. This was done in order to take out the plate gold in between the stones. The historical fulfillment would come when the temple was torn down, a Muslim mosque repressed it. What a tragedy. But fact is fact. 
in order to remove the Moscow from the temple place, they had a Christian crusade for 174 years, but they failed. Jesus' prophecy concerning the temple building is also allegory of human civilization, which dazzles the human mind, but those resources are nothing but stone, the dust of the ground. What was the disciples' response? Peter, James, John, and Andrew, and greatly surprised Jesus' word. Their surprise was twofold. One was their understanding of human culture. The other was their lack of sense of history. One of them came and asked Jesus privately, Tell us, Rabbi, when will this thing happen? And what will be sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? To Jesus, disciples were future leaders, through whom the world should be changed and the world history should be set on its right track. However, they had no insight to see the world and its future. Second, the world is a place of deception. There are many companies, and the bank, the stock market, government, capitalists, and peasants. When we watch carefully what they are doing, they are cheating and being cheated. So, St. Paul, Apostle Paul said, the world is a place of deceiving and being deceived. Most companies compete with each other to destroy each other. For example, Apple and Samsung. They merge and one company is destroyed. They have abundant money, but his comp this competition by brain melts their bones every day. Bankers are saying, there are, there are bankers. It was imperial to another banker. Finally, it was merged and its employees were all dismissed overnight. Generally, all men think they are smarter than others. In, if one should realize his imperiality, he finds a more imperial person. Then he leaves thinking of the one who is imperial to me. But he cannot get out of competition. He cannot be exception to the deception of the world. He must fight back against the competition and deception of the world and the burden of life and the insecurity of the future. How nice it would be if the world were like the paradise which God made first. But after the fall, the world became like a place of deception. Is it true? It's true. The first prophet, there are two kinds of people. One kind is people whose heart was like a, a, a flint stone. It's very hard. The other kind is very gentle and weak-minded. The brutal, strong people deceive weak people and empty their hope. Abuse. Horse prophets are very happy to devour them. They say, it is not necessary to live a life of self-denial, carry the cross, or, a cross daily and give up to yourself in the mission of God. You can live for yourself. You enjoy your life. But Jesus gave a very serious warning to his disciples. Many will come in my name, claim I am he, and will deceive many. The rumor of the world among the nation. Look at verse 5 7. Jesus said to them, Watch out! that no one deceive you. Many will come in my name, claim I am he, will deceive many, many. When you hear a word and rumor of the uh, word, we are alarmed by the word and the rumor of the word. In verse 7, Jesus talked about the word and rumors of the words, and we are alarmed by the word and the rumor of the word. Jesus said in verse 8, Nation will rise li against nation, and the kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquake in various places, and the famous, and there are beginning of a birth pain. It is marvelous. 
Jesus did not think that this troubled world which made us grieve all the time and sigh every three minutes was bad at all. Interpretation. His commander, uh, uh, his, his commander, is amazing. Trouble hurt. The trouble is the first pain of fulfilling the world salvation. This is Jesus' viewpoint. The own history of human being. It is a, a starting point of making us kingdom of priests and holy nation. Here we learn we must have a Christian world view. Young brother and sister, so let's have a let's learn the Christian viewpoint, Christian view. What a, a marvelous commentary of the Jesus on troubled world. This is a beginning of a glorious day. Hallelujah. It's amazing. This is a glorious day. It's a beginning of a glorious day. Today, you may suffer from many difficult things. Start relationship bad, bad habit, and sometimes persecution. This, is, this will not end in pain. This is the beginning of a glorious day. This is the beginning of gospel preaching. This is the beginning of a world evangelization by God's children. Who can think like this? Yes, we can. Amen? Everyone say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are not looking at the world as it is. We are looking at the world too wide. From God's point of view, the troubled world is not trouble. Trouble is the beginning of a birth pain of fulfilling God's plan of the world salvation. As we know, birth pain is very painful. In reality, men do not know what birth pain are like, said. But all mothers know birth pain are very difficult. They are a matter of life and death. But men can know by standing at the side of their wives who are growing and sweating like a fountain, they can figure out what birth pain are like. The meaning of birth pain is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Already 2,000 years have passed away since our Lord Jesus Christ came to this world. But this world is nothing but birth pain. Therefore, we should not live a fantasy world. We should not be deceived by the false prophet. We should not be frightened by the world and the rumor of the world in the world. God has a great plan for each of us. Amen. You say Amen? Amen. Amen. Great plan for you. Yet our Lord Jesus was not conceived. His disciples would not be deceived by false prophet. So in verse 5, 6, Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceive you. Many will come in my name and claim I am he and will deceive many. And the one gospel the gospel must first be preached. When we preach the gospel news, our Lord Jesus, at first we think people like it, but instead of treating us well, they arrest us and beat us up, and we are handed over to the local council and the, pro, uh, the project in the synagogue. Here, synagogue generally means all the place of children of God gathered. After birth pain, usually mothers smile looking at her baby. They smile more if a baby, a baby the, 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 boy, the, the boy baby is born. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is very oriental, say, oriental viewpoint. Sorry. So our gospel, a worker, a birth pain is to be persecuted. Jesus uh, knew that and said, on account of me, you will stand before governor and king as witness to them. In this confused world, we want to marry. Yeah, everyone wants to marry. Young students want to marry. 
and we want to make money, much money. But we don't know how, what to do next, even though we live as Christians. What, but here, we learn what we should do in this troubled world. Look at verse 10. Let's read it together, please. Let's read it, please. And the, God, the gospel must first be preached to all nations. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Jesus does not force earth. Jesus loves the world and wants to save people one by one and finally save all people. This is Jesus Christ. Do you know the first word that Jesus recorded in Mark gospel? Jesus said in Mark, uh, Mark chapter 170. Let's read together. The time has come. The kingdom of the God is near. Repent, believe, good news. There was a man who was so handsome and his pride was sky high. When he was under 30, he became the Sanhedrin member of the Jewish council. He was a very successful man. But he did not have an eternal life. He had everything, fame and money. But he, inside, he felt like dying. So he visited Jesus at night. We know what Jesus said to him. John chapter 3, 16. Let's read together. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. In Jesus' time, usually women were not un uh, unnumbered because they lacked uh, labor, power, and did not make money, and the social structure was male dominant. Now it's very different. It's, uh, I think that the first female president will, be, will appear in Korea. <laughs> okay, female president. <laughs> so, however, Jesus visited Mary in Martha's house uh, one time. Jesus said to Martha in Luke chapter 10, 41, 41, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Martha was chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The story is follow. Martha was her older sister, and Mary was her younger sister, but Mary wanted to be loved more than Martha. Every time Jesus came, the, the, this time also he grabbed Jesus and began to want one Bible study with him. Their want one -to Bible study was endless. Meanwhile, Martha was preparing food for Jesus and his hungry disciple. Many times Martha called Mary to uh, come and help her, but Mary pretended as if he had no, uh, not here heard her request. Then Martha came to Jesus complained, but Jesus admired Mary. She started the Bible with him. In this way, Jesus poured Mary in more. What an interesting story. But Jesus always has a point to teach those who are interested in Bible study. Bible, God's Word. I encourage you, my young brother and sister, read the Bible. You say Amen. Amen. You say Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Love Bible. Let's, uh, let's love Bible together. And how can we describe the entire story of Jesus teaching the Bible? In the house, on the way, and after sleeping, uh, sleepless night. It was not through speech alone, but through his example. Finally, the Passion Week come, Jesus was in Jerusalem. He was supposed to be the hanging on the cross and uh, shed much blood and finish his life. But one day in early morning, he went out and met a person and told the person to the Bible very prayerfully. This is God's, is the Jesus' mission. This is the true meaning of Jesus' first pain, fulfilling God's hope of the world's salvation. Anybody would be trembling before us. All of us is a, 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 a trembling before us. But Jesus also, uh, uh, so, uh, Jesus also was blessed himself, even Son of God. Even Son of God. But he did what he had to do. He taught Bible to summon near uh, the temple. Here we learn how to live in this troubled world. What must we do in troubled world? Let's read it together. 
In this travel world, the first thing we must do is preach the gospel to all people. Let's read together, please. In this travel world, the first thing we must do is preach the gospel to all people. Amen. Whoever has my command, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved my father. I too love him, show myself to him. Hallelujah. Young brother and sister, receive the God's word, God's commandment. You seek first God's kingdom first, everything will be needed to you. So your life will be blessed. So we should keep keeping the God's commandment in our heart, right direction. This is God's heart. Every nation, every, so every people, the keep God's commandment, that country will be richly blessed. Individual saying, God bless you. Please stand up. Oh, today, okay, so think about today's message. Let's pray together.